Hey, it's Steve and welcome to my shop. Now, 40 watt lasers have been around for a while and they just seem to be falling from the sky these days. Everybody's got one and there seems to be a new one released every week. Now this one is the Creality Falcon 2, 40 watt of course. And it isn't the absolute latest release of, of 40 watt lasers. It's been around for a few months and I finally got gotten around to having a look at it. So in this video, I want to put it through its paces, compare it maybe to some of the other 40 watt lasers just to see how, how it compares. We all know it's going to be a good cutter, but overall, is this a good laser? Stick around and we'll find out together. All right, quick fly over here, all metal construction on the Falcon 2, uh, nice channeling, uh, little front panel that does the job, it allows you to navigate as well as there's a key switch and an e-stop there. Over on the end, uh, we have the cables for the power and the USB nicely out of the way, as well as the on-off switch, so you won't hit it accidentally or anything. Uh, up on the gantry, we've got the big 40 watt laser module. Now it does use uh, an old style focus bar and you loosen the thumb screws to, to focus it. Uh, We'll talk about that. There's also a manifold there to, to connect all the hoses and wires. And over on the other end of the laser, we have the control for the air pump, the speed control, as well as the connector for the air pump and the, the air pump, of course, uh, standard aquarium style air pump. So all in all, a nice solid package. But there's a few things to look at here. If we pull up some, some specs from the marketing material for the Falcon 2, uh, spot size 0.1 by 0.15 millimeters, that's kind of middle of the road. It's not the smallest by far. It's also not the biggest, so it's kind of right in there. Uh, working speed, however, at 25,000 millimeters a second, that's pretty slow for a 40 watt laser. Uh, compare that to something like a longer B1 where it's 36,000, so it's almost 30% higher. Uh, quite a difference and we'll see what the impact of that is in the results. Uh, working area 400 by 415, that's pretty typical. Uh, USB connectivity only, no Wi-Fi. Uh, for me personally, that's not a huge deal. I never use Wi-Fi anyway, but uh, but there will be some who, who are worried about that. Standard uh, light burn and laser gerbil interface and the typical support files. So all in all, it's 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 there, it's kind of an average from a performance perspective. And let's take a look at the results and we'll see what the impact of that is. So I ran the usual uh, performance test that I run and uh, certainly the cutting test is amazing. This laser at 40 watts is easily a great cutter. Engraving, top speed here is 25,000 millimeters a second. So anything above the, the arrow I put there, those results are basically invalid. Uh, same on the gradient test, uh, anything over 25,000, they're all the same. And this is where it impacted the most. If you look at the, the, the dog test at zero to 100%, which is normally what I run for a grayscale, uh, not so good. So I re-ran the test at 50% and that seemed to work certainly better, but basically we're using half of the capability of a typical 40 watt laser here. So at 25,000 millimeters a second, you're still only able to use 50% of the power to engrave an image. And that to me seems a little, a little questionable. Then I decided to do a little, a little cut project. So I started with some eighth inch plywood, dropped it in under the laser there. Now I need to focus the laser and I have to use this focus block, which I guarantee you is going to get lost. Uh, this is a little, a little old school, but it actually works fairly quickly. So you just loosen the two knobs and drop it down onto the block and you're focused. Uh, I started my job. It's just the little penguin model that I created a while ago to test certain things. And not surprisingly, a 40 watt laser is an amazing cutter. It doesn't take a whole lot of the 40 watts to cut through an eighth inch plywood. But I did the job and you can see when it's finished here, uh, it all fit together very nicely. The edges of the, of the wood here are very clean and uh, the whole thing is really precise. So nice job uh, at cutting. And now we can take a look at some things I think they did really well here on the Falcon 2 and a few things I think they could definitely do better with. Uh, on the pro side, uh, it's a very solid design. It's a Creality product, so it goes without saying, but you take it out of the box, it's mostly assembled and it feels really robust. So I don't think you're ever gonna have to worry about construction issues. Uh, on the cutting, it's an excellent cutting laser. Yes, it's a 40 watt laser, so you would expect that. But realistically, you can cut it 900 millimeters a minute with this laser, which is better than say an X-Tool S1 uh, and a number of other 40 watt lasers that I've tried. So good job there. 
And there's good feedback on this laser. So there's there's LEDs on the on the laser for all kinds of things, but most importantly, there's some indicators for the air assist, whether it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, there's an indicator there if there's a fire in the laser and also one for detecting when the lens is dirty. So good, good for them. And uh, overall, yeah, it's a great laser. Now there are definitely some things they need to fix on this laser to make it competitive with other 40 watt lasers. I'll start with the obvious one, the speed at 25,000 millimeters a second for a 40 watt laser that's just too slow. Uh, if, if that's your top speed, then don't bother with a 40 watt laser. And it's just mind boggling because there's a lot of 20 watt lasers now that will do uh, 36,000 millimeters a second. And this one is kind of clunking along. So I think they really have to fix that. That in itself isn't a super big problem, but when you start engraving, you saw the image of the dog I did where uh, where at 100% it was just blowing through the material and I had to scale it back to 50%. Now, they do have a precise versus normal button on top of the laser module. And when the precise LED is lit up, what that really means is you're down, you've cut the laser power down to 20 watts maximum power. So that does effectively the same thing I did, which is reduce the power by 50%. That is also probably not a great solution if I'm doing a compound job where I'm doing some engraving and then I'm doing some cutting. I can't stop the laser to, to flip that button back to 40 watts. So they really need to solve this problem. Uh, next on the list is that old school focusing. That focus block is gonna get lost for sure, but it's just so easy to put a little flip down leg or auto focus if you're something like an S X2 S1. Uh, this is just, too old. It's it's too obsolete and they need to fix that. Uh, and last is the manual air control. If you look at, at some lasers, say the Delta from Algo Laser, that laser has uh, automatic speed control on the air. So if you're cutting, you get full blast power. And if you're engraving it, it really scales the power on the air assist back. So here you have a knob and again, it's, it's kind of old school. So it's one of those things I think they need to resolve. Now, just before I wind down, I'll remind you, if you like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up button because that really helps the Google engine figure out that we're doing good things here. And if you regularly watch videos on this channel, uh, also click that subscribe button because, hey, that's what inspires me to make videos. Now, I'll put uh, an affiliate link for the Creality Falcon 2 down below. If you buy from there, it helps out the channel. And uh, with that, we can wind down. So I'll say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.